the SEC, CBS, 3.30 Eastern. It's been ingrained in us as college football fans for decades. No longer, though, going forward. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis based on your participation. Please like the video, subscribe right here. All right, let's break it down for 2022. We continue our series. Check out the other videos. They are down in the comments section. We have analyzed all five conferences and their TV ratings performance for 2022. We put it all together, and now we are taking your requests. We've looked at the noon Eastern time window. Check out the video just released, and now 3.30 Eastern. I had to get used to 2.30 Central time for about seven years when I covered the SEC, and everybody said 2.30, 2.30, 2.30. But yeah, 3.30 Eastern. Let's check it out and see what the numbers say about the 2022 season and the expected dominance of CBS and the SEC. Well, CBS actually gets into the fray a little bit later in the season, but not right out of the gate. Look at the week one results. Georgia, Oregon, the most highly watched game at the 330 window in week one, the third highest rated game of the week. Cincinnati, Arkansas, also a top 10 game with almost 3 million viewers. And then you see, again, early in the season before the networks and the conferences get locked into their conference uh, agreements, you see a lot of oddball kind of matchups at uh, different times. And there you see CBS doing a 330 uh, window there in week one with Arizona taking on San Diego State with less than 1 million viewers and just barely into the top 20 for that particular week. Let's move on to week two. Pitt, Tennessee got together on ABC, and that was the highest ranked college football game of the window. And number two for the entire week, all time zones put together. Wisconsin, Washington State on Fox did almost 4 million views, and it was the fourth highest rated game of the week. And then you see on down the line, Marshall upsetting Notre Dame on NBC drew 2.5 million viewers. You don't typically see almost 2 million viewers for a game on ESPN2, but Texas A&M upset by App State drew in a top 10 rating for the week. Let's go to week three, and here's the first SEC game on CBS, and it involves the Big Ten. You put the Big Ten and the SEC on the same field, even when the teams are not the best, 5-7 and seven Auburn, and you're going to get the top-rated game of the week. And it was the only game played in the regular season between the two most popular conferences in college football. Notre Dame with a scare against Cal on NBC again with about 3 million views in the seventh Highest rated game of the week and the second highest in the window as we move it back to 2.30. So we include the Notre Dame 2.30 Eastern time kickoffs in this comparison of midday games. BYU and Oregon on Fox did 2.5 million views as well. Week four and now CBS and the SEC take over. Tennessee, Florida, good football game and the number one rated game, not just at 3.30, but for the entire week of college football at 5.5 million viewers. North Carolina and Notre Dame did well on ABC at the same time. And then you've got Texas and Texas Tech on ESPN. Typically, we're going to see CBS. And if anyone challenges CBS uh, at this time slot, it's going to be ABC. And then you're going to see ESPN. And for the Fox window, that's usually a four Eastern time start. It's Oregon, Washington State in week four with 2.27 million views. And those are the four games that ranked in the top 10 in college football with all time zones taken into consideration. Week five, it's once again the SEC and CBS at 5.8 million views. Arkansas and Bama, the number one rated game of the week. So we think of the prime time game being the highest rated, most popular game, the best matchup. But as we go through noon, 3.30, we're not seeing that necessarily. ABC showed Florida State and Wake Forest as a top 10 game and also Oklahoma State and Baylor with 2.4 million views. Interesting to note, the highest rated game on the Big Ten Network the entire season was a blowout. Ohio State and Rutgers, the Big, the, the Big Ten Network had far better games than this, but this was the highest rated, 1.79 million and it's the only game for btn that ranked in the top 10 for any particular week in college football and there were also two other big 10 games being played at the same time on more prominent networks espn with penn state northwestern and maryland michigan state playing on fs1 with smaller audiences in week six the cbs game of georgia auburn did well at 4.24 million 
It was the third highest rated game of the week, but look at that. Ohio State, Michigan State, not even a close game at 49 to 20. Buckeyes won it 4.4 million views. So the number one rated game in this time slot this week went to ABC in the number two rated game of the week. And it shouldn't be surprising when CBS and the SEC loses in a particular week, it goes to the Big Ten and it goes to Ohio State and it goes to ABC. In Week 7, one of the most highly anticipated games and one of the best games of the year, Tennessee and Bama on CBS did three. Week 7 brought us one of the most highly anticipated games, and of course Tennessee breaking a long losing streak to Bama, undefeated matchup on the Tennessee side here, and just a tremendous football game that went down to the last second, 52-49. And yes, 11.5 million people watched it. It was the number one rated game of the week by far. Other games in the time window that did well. Michigan State, Wisconsin. Consider this. Michigan State, Wisconsin, both were not good teams last year. But this, again, is the Big Ten on Fox doing a better number by 300,000 folks than TCU, an undefeated TCU team, and at the time, Oklahoma State challenging for the Big 12 on ABC, Arkansas, BYU, also with over a million views and ranked 13th in Week 7. We stay with the 3.30 Eastern Time window, and we go to Week 8, and we've got Texas, Oklahoma State defeating CBS and the SEC in this particular week by about 600,000 views as the second-highest-rated game of the week. LSU Ole Miss did uh, 3.8 million at number 4, also a top-10 game out of the Pac-12, Oregon, UCLA, one of the uh, most watched games in that conference for the entire season. We go to week nine and CBS and the SEC back in the number one spot. 5.6 million watched Georgia and Florida. Pretty close game into the fourth quarter. Second highest rated game of the week. Oklahoma State, Kansas State did well on Fox. The fifth highest rated game of the week. Illinois, Nebraska. Nebraska, of course, a bad football team at 4-8, and eight, but still, they bring in some views at 2.5 million and the sixth highest rated game of the week. Uh, ESPN many times goes with American Conference games during this window, and Cincinnati UCF are probably the two most popular teams in the conference, did over a million. Huge numbers in Week 10 for the SEC and CBS. Once again, over 13 million people watched Georgia, Tennessee. It was by far the number one game of the week and the window. Penn State, Indiana on ABC. Seventh place for the week. Those were the only two games that did over a million views in this particular time slot. Look at this. This is interesting. Again, it's the power of the Big Ten. You've got the Big Ten Network doing almost the number with Michigan State, Illinois. Illinois, a good team last year. They were contending for the West, but Michigan State had a bad year. They only won five games. Oregon, Colorado. I know it's a bad matchup, but still it's Oregon. It's Pac-12 and it's on ESPN which blows away BTN in almost any other situation, but only did about 30,000 more views and was only one spot ahead. Again, it shows that people watch Big Ten football. Let's go to Week 11 in CBS and the SEC back on top. Bama, Ole Miss, 8.7 million views. That was the top-rated game of the week. We see this time and time again. It'll be interesting to see once we get to the primetime window how those games stack up. Michigan, Nebraska, not a good game. Third most watched game of the week, though, at 3.8 million. Another Big Ten game on Fox at the same time. Penn State and Maryland was the 10th most watched game of the week. Uh, Clemson, Louisville, Iowa, Wisconsin. Also note here that with all those other viewers watching Big Ten games, that the Iowa-Wisconsin game, an important game, but still Clemson-Louisville and Clemson uh, on its way to another ACC championship, that the Big Ten game did almost as well on FS1 as the ESPN game involving Clemson and Louisville. As we noted earlier, ABC, typically the one network at this time slot that can challenge CBS and the SEC, and there you got it, uh, the Big Ten matchup between Ohio State and Maryland, a really good game. 6.6 million watched it. That was the number one rated game of the week. Georgia-Kentucky was in the top five, kind of a plotting 16-6 to game, still 4.5 million watched it. Minnesota-Iowa, important game in the Big Ten Western Division on Fox, did 2.5 million. It was the other game that ranked in the top 10. In terms of Notre Dame here against Boston College, this was the lowest rated game, not just on NBC, but any Notre Dame game 
uh, as Boston College was just a bad football team and not much of a game here as Notre Dame and BC got 1.27 million views. Clemson, Miami right behind, and this was a bad, awful football game as well. Week 13, we know Ohio State, Michigan did 17 million. Now, as we go into the 330 window, another great, great rivalry, arguably the best in college football, Bama, Auburn on CBS. Even though Auburn was down at five and six at the time, 6.2 million watched it. It was the fourth highest rated game of the week. Here's the factor of TCU emerging and gaining a lot of popularity and a lot of eyeballs. 4.3 million people watched TCU against Iowa State. On Fox, it was a top five rated game. Now, many of these other games you're going to see here were on Friday. So a lot of teams get some exposure on Friday that they would not get on Saturday. And you see more higher rated games and more viewership because it's spread over two games. And so over two days and people are watching football on both days. So North Carolina and North Carolina State did well on ABC and at the same time, Time slot, the next day, Oregon, Oregon State did just as well. Arkansas, Mizzou on CBS, 3.2 million UCLA Cal. And uh, despite, again, not being great teams and Cal, a really bad football team, but still 3.2 million watched it because it was on Friday and it did not have competition. FS1's number one rated game all season on that network was Penn State and Michigan State. Even though they had all that competition, they had 2 million people watching that game with the Nittany Lions and Sparty at the same time as Minnesota taking on Wisconsin on ESPN in Nebraska, Iowa. That was a Friday game, of course, as the Hawkeyes were vying for a Big Ten Western division. It did almost a million and a half on the Big Ten network. So those are the numbers week to week in regards to the matchups and the number of views and where it placed in the top 10 or the top 20 in all of college football for that particular weekend. Now we dive into the various angles to try to break it down to give you some perspective on what it all means. The number one game in the 330 time slot went to CBS eight times out of 13 weeks. The other five went to ABC. Most of those were Big Ten games, if not all of them. I think one was a Big 12 game. And then if we look at the top 10 games, okay, these are games that were played at 330 Eastern time, but placed in the top 10 for the entire day entire weekend, ABC actually eclipsed CBS uh, 13 times in having top 10 games. CBS at 11, Fox at 11, and then you see ESPN chiming in. ESPN 2 had a top 10 game, and NBC, of course, with Notre Dame, and there you see the oddball in the bunch with uh, the Big Ten Network and Ohio State Rutgers, a top 10 game for that particular week. Now, if we add up all the viewership, For those particular networks for the entire season, let's see how that shakes out. ABC broadcast 14 games at 3.30 Eastern with over 51 million views. CBS had a little bit better average with 51 million views on only 13 games. Fox, 13 games, 36 million. ESPN, just over a million views per game at the 3.30 time frame at uh, 12 games, 15 million. And then you see the other networks and how that breaks down. And because of other sports obligations on ESPN2 and so forth, they didn't always broadcast college football at 3.30 Eastern. So we will now show you the averages with CBS now taking the top spot slightly over ABC, Fox a clear number three, and then ESPN from there and the other networks on down the line. We also want to note here that if we take out the two games that were played at 3.30 Eastern time on CBS the first two weeks of the season that did not include the SEC, that if we just take the SEC-CBS combination, well, it bolsters that audience considerably per game. The number one game of the week during the 3.30 time frame involved 17 SEC teams. That, of course, on CBS. The Big Ten placed five teams there, the Big 12 two, And there you see the Pac-12 one time. That was Oregon in week one against Georgia. And the ACC also had one team uh, in a top number one game of the week. Now, if we break it down to the top 10, then you see more of an even distribution because the SEC and CBS largely dominated uh, eight out of 13 weeks uh, with ABC chiming in well. Uh, But the ABC push was uh, mainly bolstered by the Big Ten as the SEC placed 27 teams in those time slots uh, among the top 10 games, the Big Ten 22, and then it drops off considerably from there, although the Pac-12 did pretty well with 14 teams playing in top 10 games. 
Now, if we go to just conference-only games, so knock out the non-conference games because we don't always know who was the team that drew in the audience, but we know from conference games that we can draw an apples-to-apples apples comparison here. The SEC in 11 games had 72.4 million viewers. We know from our earlier video at noon that the Big Ten does rather well at 3.30 Eastern time, but not as well as the SEC because the Big Ten best game is typically at noon. So 15 outings for the Big Ten with 35 million views. Now, and that number for the Big Ten is without the Big Ten network because the Big Ten network weights down the averages for the Big Ten, just like the SEC network and the ACC network would for those conferences as well. Actually, the Big Ten had 30 games during this window, including the Big Ten network with over 47 million views. Then you see the other networks chiming in. The ACC only had four conference games during the 330 window. And I got to think that that really hurt the ACC uh, overall. And they averaged over 2 million views per game, as did the Pac-12. Now, what networks are showing what conferences during this midday time window? Well, we know that Fox is prioritizing the Big Ten for the noon window, but then at the 3.30 or 4 o'clock window, a lot of Pac-12 games. The Big Ten does get a number of games there as well as the Big 12 did, as well with seven teams appearing. And then the Conference USA and BYU designations there are just because they play teams from those three conferences. For ABC, they showed a lot of Big Ten football, and they had a lot of great results with Michigan, Illinois, Ohio State, Maryland, Ohio State, Michigan State. Uh, the SEC showed up not as a particular one game versus SEC teams, but SEC teams playing other conferences. So that uh, accounts for the three appearances by the SEC on ABC. There you see uh, the ACC with the likes of uh, Florida State, Wake, Clemson, Wake uh, showed up on ABC a number of times as well. CBS, of course, showed the SEC. That's what they show. Uh, the Pac-12 only showed up because there were early season out-of-conference games there. And the same thing with the Big 12. And the same thing there with the Big 10. That was that Auburn-Penn State matchup. And, of course, CBS's secondary conference has been the Mountain West Conference. And usually those games are on CBS Sportsnet. For ESPN, they're all over the map, of course. They're showing the Big 10, the ACC, the Big 12. Also, the American Conference jumps in on ESPN and ESPN2 as we look at ESPN2, showing some Big 10 games, Big 12. Again, all over the map, although the American Conference must have a deal there uh, I'm not familiar with and have been detached from for quite some time, but the American Conference shows up quite a bit there at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN2. FS1, of course, we know when the priority is the Big Ten and the Big 12, that's what you've got there from the Fox contract with FS1 showing 10 Big 12 teams and six Big Ten teams at 3.30 or typically 4 o'clock Eastern time. Well, there is the final run of CBS and the SEC all by themselves at 3.30 Eastern time. Now CBS brings on the Big Ten, still has the SEC for one more season, but we have seen the end of an era and CBS's domination with the SEC, although ABC countering with a lot of Big Ten games did rather well in cutting into that uh, CBS SEC dominance. Interesting to note across the board as we make our way through the time windows, we are going to catch prime time next when a lot of folks think, well, this is when everybody's watching college football. Well, we will see. Let's check out prime time next right here at the Voice of College Football.